Hello, Semper Squad, and welcome back to Semper Admin, your go-to resource for mastering administrative tasks. In today's video, we will be covering the financial rules outlined in the Joint Travel Regulation. Before we dive in, let's quickly discuss why it's crucial for Marines to understand what this is and how it's utilized. Adhering to financial rules in the JTR is essential for ensuring compliance with the Department of Defense policies, maintaining financial responsibility, and avoiding issues related to reimbursing, uh, reimbursement of claims. Understanding these rules help Marines manage their travel expenses efficiently and avoid potential pitfalls related to financial management. So the first thing that we're going to do is we came here to the JTR, and what we're going to look at here is the receipt requirements. So in this, we're going to talk about the different um, chapters or subchapters of this, but it's a pretty small um, aspect for the JTR. So we're going to talk about first about retaining receipts. So travelers are advised that all receipts for tax and other purposes that must be maintained and used to submit um, for official travel. The DOD uh, FMR, the Financial Management uh, Regulation, Volume 9, uh, covers all the travel policy. And this requires itemized receipts for each lodging expense, regardless of the amount, and any individual expenses of $75 or more require a receipt. I will let you know that AOs are discon uh, discouraged from requiring additional receipt exempt, except for subordinate uh, substantiated reimbursement if a traveler's claim contains doubtful reimbursement. So there are some financial um, offices or dispersers that will require uh, receipts if it is under $75. Just be aware of that. Um, and that might be to cover any of those types of things they might find doubtful. So if you have like $574 receipts or expenses and they're like, hey, provide me a receipt because I find them to be doubtful, they have the right to do that. So just be aware that you might have to require a receipt for something, even though it's under $75, because AOs are authorized to request those things in those situations. If you have a lost receipt, if a receipt is um, unattainable uh, um, or you cannot read it, um, it has been um, lost or destroyed. A receipt uh, st or a lost receipt statement or a statement in lieu of receipt uh, can be submitted to identify the receipt cost. So that's what you're able to do in case of an event that you cannot provide the receipt for your stuff. You can do a statement in lieu providing the itemized uh, information of what that receipt would have pertained and then submit that. So just be uh, aware of that. And then also, just as a note, a lost receipt statement cannot be suitable for online booking of a hotel because you can always get those receipts back and identify online. Same thing goes for like Ubers or Lyfts because you get those electronic receipts anyways. So there's no reason why you cannot provide that information. So duplicate payment and fraudulent claims. So a traveler cannot be reimbursed more than once for the same allowance or expense. The government does not pay expenses um, reimbursed or to be reimbursed by any other entity, the traveler must repay such duplicate payments to the government. So for example, if you um, have a refund of a cost from a taxi receipt or an Uber or something like that, you got reimbursed by that entity and then you try to claim it through the government, that is unauthorized. You cannot have duplicate payments back to you. So you can't double dip in a sense. So if you have a reimbursement of hotel costs from the hotel, back to your government travel charge card, you cannot claim that so same full amount uh, before the reimbursement on your card for your travel claim. You have to do only at the cost that has been expended to you for that travel. So you cannot do double. Fraudulent claims though, um, if a reasonable suspicion of a falsified expense for lodging, meals, or incidental expenses exists, and the suspicion is identified before the traveler is reimbursed, the applicable per diem or actual expense allowance is denied for the entire day which the suspected expense is claimed. If there is a reasonable suspicion that falsifies expense other than the cost of lodging, meals, or incidental expenses, the suspicious uh, expense is denied. Meaning if you have anything on there that is questionable. So if I tried to fraudulently change maybe the receipt for the lodging, I wanted to say it was $55 a day vice 50. And I tried to Adobe Pro the cost or something and it looked weird and I caught it as a reviewer or at the financial level trying to, before I paid it out, I will just zero out that entire day's worth of amount. I won't change it to what I think is right, just zero it out, and then there will be no reimbursement at that time um, for that piece. And that goes for any type of um, suspicion filed 
uh, for any type of expenses, any type of reimbursable. If there's anything in there that I think is not correct, I will zero those things out. So just be aware of that. And as a steward of those originators of these claims, make sure that you are not doing any of this stuff um, on your travel because you do not want to have any issues or face any type of legal actions that might actually um, come up from this. So before we wrap it up, I just want to point out a few common mistakes to avoid or tips to keep in mind while working with this. So remember to uh, failing to keep itemized receipts for lodging or significant expenses can always cause delay. Um, you always want to retain these itemized receipts to sustain, substantiate these claims, ensure that you're complying with these regulations, and also making sure that the cost that you are putting into your travel claim matches what's on the receipts for what is reimbursable. Uh, a lot of times we might uh, screw up by adding it in properly, maybe switching uh, numbers back and forth, but always make sure that you're looking at those things. And then um, submitting duplicate claims for the same expense. Uh, remember, we cannot do that. Um, you always want to double check your claims to ensure that you're not requesting reimbursement for the same expense more than once. Uh, sometimes you might have um, put it in there multiple times or maybe the screen did not refresh after you did put something in there. So you put it in again and then you accidentally did it twice. But you always want to make sure that that information um, is accurate. Or if you um, have submitted multiple claims at the same time, you want to make sure that you only do one claim for that trip. To quickly recap, today we covered the financial rules in the JTR. We discussed the importance of retaining receipts, handling lost receipts, avoiding duplicate payments, and the consequences of fun, uh, fraudulent claims. Mastering these regulations will help you manage your expenses more effectively and ensuring compliance with the DOD policy. That's it for today's video. If you found this content helpful or if you learned anything, be sure to like, share, and subscribe to Semper Admin for more instructional videos on the Marine Corps Administrative Duties. Feel free to leave a comment below if you have any questions or suggestions for a future topic. But until next time, stay motivated and Semper Fi.